And uh, now it is time for us to move on to our next session, which is the community session. So far, we had heard five fantastic presentations on very different domains of the drug discovery process itself. Uh, and but all of them had something in common. They were all relying on open source functionality of NIME, uh, more or less. Um, and more importantly, they were uh, all relying on features and nodes developed by our community. Uh, supporting and building a community is very important for us at NIME. Uh, we have been always very um, accentuated and uh, we have been always very straight about encouraging people to develop and share uh, any kind of material that they have, be that nodes or, or, or workflows, as they are very valuable and they add a lot of, uh, a lot of functionalities, especially domain-specific functionalities, uh, to R9, as it would be, for example, in our case, some different kind of chemical, um, cheminformatics tools, bioinformatics tools, uh, spectra analysis tools, and of course, this list can go on pretty long. Um, as these nodes are ultimately part of the NIME universe, we invited today three members of this community to talk about their nodes, uh, the features that they want to cover and they are about to cover, and also to talk about some updates and let us peek into their kitchen to see what's cooking there. Uh, with further ado, uh, I would love to invite our first speaker, who's Timo from OpenMS. He is one of the core developers of the OpenMS nodes. So Timo, the stage is yours. So, thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I have the pleasure today to step in for Julianus uh, and to report on our next version of OpenMS Node in Nine. But uh, before we start with our teaser, let's briefly talk about our favorite technology, uh, mass spectrometry. With mass spectrometry, we want to investigate samples at the molecular level. And usually we want to identify and quantify molecules like proteins, metabolites, or chemicals in these samples. Typically, uh, these experiments start with a sample that gets separated using chromatography. Then the analytes elude from the column and get ionized so they can be actually measured in the mass uh, spectrometer. And the mass spectrometer then measures the individual masses and ions uh, that arrive and pr produce so-called mass spectra with peaks that relate to the abundance and uh, the uh, mass of the analytes that have been measured. So we modern instruments produce quite a large amount of data. So we easily end up with more than 50,000 spectra in a single run. Data can reach up to 100 gigabytes. Uh, and larger studies, uh, you can imagine much more. Um, that's one challenge. The other challenge in computational mass spec is that we usually have to deal with hundreds of different experimental methods and protocols that want to identify or quantify these analytes. And the same holds also for the computational methods. Uh, we basically also need a huge amount of different uh, computational methods to analyze this data, often tailored to a specific question that we have in mind. So uh, a single tool or workflow is not enough. And the, the solution that fits well with the concept of NIME is to provide a set of tools that can be combined into flexible workflows. So OpenMS or, and is a C++ framework, and it has some Python bindings to perform these kind of analysis. It's open source, so it can be used also in a commercial context, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And we provide a lot of small analysis applications that form the building blocks of these workflows. And we integrate these tools uh, into workflow systems. And our favorite uh, workflow system uh, is Nine. And I will briefly get into how we wrap our tools in NIME. So our tools, they write, they can describe the parameters. So they write out uh, a so-called common tool description file that uh, our generic NIME nodes uh, tool uses to generate the actual Java source code uh, or 
in a static or dynamic way. So we can load up these tools and use them in NIME. And we also uh, extended uh, NIME or this generic NIME nodes, extends NIMEs to also handle files. Um, and also in our case for OpenMS to convert these files back into NIME tables. So these, we make these tools in total about 180. Uh, some of them have larger tasks, some of them smaller ones, available in the OpenMS 9 plugin. Um, it's available as a community, community contribution, um, stable and trunk. And um, we soon plan to release the OpenMS 3.0 release, including the 3.09 plugins. We have added uh, quite a lot of new novel tools, for example, re related to cross-linking, um, protein DNA, protein RNA cross-linking, also some RNA PTM analysis in the mass spec, just to name a few of them. Uh, I can't go into much detail uh, on these. Uh, and we also have a nice extension to PyOpenMS, so it's now um, easier or more powerful and also much better documented. So um, just check out one of the links to go on our PyOpenMS page uh, to read up on the new ways how you actually can add superpowers to your uh, nine workflows if you integrate also some PyOpenMS scripts. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out in this short teaser is that we also uh, extended the workflows on NimeHub a bit. Um, feel free to check out um, NimeHub on, on our latest workflows. Uh, we added one where we show how also peptide and protein identification can be done in Nime, including some nice visualization of spectra. Um, Julianus also uh, published a blog post on that, um, something you should check out definitely. That's already it. If you want to develop uh, mass spec tools with OpenMS or PyOpenMS, uh, feel free to contact us and create your next generation of workflows in line. Fantastic, Timo. Thank you very much for this presentation. Now, unfortunately, we do not have a Q&A session just right after these talks, but you can post all your questions uh, to the forum, uh, to our forum. We are going to share a link with that. So guys, stay tuned. Um, uh, we are going to have that slide coming up very, very shortly. Um, again, it was a reminder, a very nice presentation. And well, anybody who's dealing with MS Spectra, I think they should really check out the uh, the OpenMS nodes, they're super cool and um, they, they might be, be of a great help for you. So thank you, Timo, again, for the presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next presenter on stage is Greg, uh, who's gonna obviously talk about Articate's nodes, but before handing over the stage to you, let me first just congratulate you on winning the Mike Lynch Award 2022. That's a very well-deserved one, so congrats, Greg. I'll hear you, Greg. Maybe. It helps if I unmute yes. myself. Thank you, Norman. No, it's much better. I can hear you. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to do a quick overview of what's new or talk about what's new in the RDG Now Notes um, as of kind of things that have changed in the past year. But quick, first, an introduction to what those nodes are. Um, these are a set of trusted community nodes that are, of course, open source. Um, the primary developer is Manuel Schwarza at Novartis. I also do a bit of work on them, but not as much as I would like. I um, mean, what the nodes do is they provide some extensive or a fairly extensive set of chem informatics functionality um, for NIME that's based on the RDK chem informatics toolkit. As Norbert mentioned in the intro, NIME is a general purpose data analysis platform, so it doesn't have domain special things like chemistry built in. And so that's what we uh, decided to do with the RDKit nodes is to provide a set of basic and very quite useful chemistry functionality um, to be available in NIME. Along the way, we also provided access to the RDKit itself, the RDKit backend, which is used in some other sets of NIME extensions. And we'll hear about that later from Steve. So what's new in the nodes um, in the past year? Uh, one of the things, this is kind of, seems minor, but it is really super helpful. Um, in the preferences dialog now, you can actually find out which version of the RDKit backend is being used. 
Um, this is really nice if you want to compare results coming from NIME with results that you're getting from Python and as, or from um, other places where you're using the RD kit. And as long as you're using the same version of the back end, you should expect to get exactly the same results. One of the other things, of course, that's changed is we are keeping that back end up to date. So um, every couple of months when there's a new RD kit version, we will um, push things out and update the, the back end. Um, at the moment, you can see we're a little bit behind. That's something that's coming in the next few weeks as another update to get the most recent already get functionality available. Um, one of the big changes that's happened is we added a bunch of new options to the add conformers node. Um, this is a node that takes a normal or a 2D structure of a molecule and adds 3D coordinates to it. You can add a variety of different or a number of different conformers if you want. The RDKit conformer generator is quite good. Um, it's kind of been independently validated. There's a couple of different papers out there talking about the quality. Um, and it provides a lot of different options. And so now in the advanced tab um, for the add conformers dialog, you have access to those options. Um, and you can, we've tried to make the, sen the defaults sensible. So if you don't change the options, you should get good results. But we, um, if you do want to have fine control over the conformer generation, that's now available to you. Um, the new node that we've added over the past year is the molecule to SVG node. Um, this is particularly useful for if you have molecules in a NIME table and you would like to make those visible in views. So, for example, in a, in a table view um, or in a tile view. Uh, there is the people who are familiar with using NIME for a while, you're, you're probably used to using the render to image node. And that works, but it's kind of slow and doesn't give you a lot of control over the way the molecules are drawn. So we added this new molecule to SVG node, which gives you access to a lot of the control that you have with changing how the molecules are drawn in the RD kit and directly spits out an SVG cell. This is a lot faster than the render to, to image node as well. So what's coming, um, as I mentioned, sometime in the next couple of weeks, we'll update to the most recent RDKit backend. So you have um, all of the new functionality there. And then the thing I'm most excited about is when NIME 4.6 is released, um, we will be able to write NIME nodes um, in Python instead of having to write in Java. Um, and as a Python programmer myself, I'm super excited about that because it's going to make it a lot easier for me to write nodes. Um, and I am hopeful that once we do that, we'll start to see a lot more nodes becoming available. With that, I'll close out. Um, I'm happy to answer questions in the forum, as Norbert said. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to, to talk about the stuff that we've done over the past year or so. Thanks, Norbert. Thank you, Greg, for the presentation. And um, well, introducing us to, to Articate nodes and the basic functionalities of Articate. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. Our next presenter is Steve uh, from Bernalis, who is one of the persons who is actually behind the whole collection of the Bernalis nodes. So Steve, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to, to hear about your new nodes. Please take it away. Thanks, Norbert. And thanks, Norm, for the invitation to talk this, this afternoon. Um, I'm going to just start with a little bit of background as to who Bernalis is. Um, we are a company based in Cambridge in the UK. We have around 65 scientists. Uh, we work in uh, primarily fragment-based and structure-based drug discovery research, often on challenging targets where we need to be innovative in either our screening methods or crystallography methods or in even our, um, our software. Um, we have a lot of collaborations and we've developed a number of clinical candidates in the last six years, five or six years. We are heavy users of open source software. Um, and as a result, we also find ourselves contributing to open source projects. Uh, we have a GitHub uh, organization page where you can find a few repositories at the moment. Uh, one is our Nine community, which is what I'll talk about this afternoon. We also have repositories about relating to 3D printed flow chemistry and lab equipment, what we refer to as lab on the cheap. Uh, and also digital lab, which is more about data acquisition within the lab environment. And our developers have also contributed to a wide range of open source projects. Um, we have one NIME certified developer, that's me, three other, nine, other, three other um, develop, full time developers, and a variety of NIME desktop users uh, at Benalis. We're also a NIME uh, server customer. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you a brief historical overview of our community contribution and the sort of philosophy as to what's in it. 
Um, we described this in some detail, although it's a little out of date now in this paper from 20, in current MedCAN in 2020. Um, our contribution was first released in June 2012, so just about 10 years ago, with a single node, our original PDB connector node, which was written for us by Dave Morley. Um, we're now in version 1.34, which was released at the end of May. We have over 200 active nodes and nearly 50 nodes now that have been deprecated. We also have a number of aggregation operators which appear in the group by and column aggregator nodes that are operating on bit and byte vector uh, fingerprints, a port type. And recently, a bit of a uh, change of direction for us, we've added a user interface enhancement and uh, a couple of extension points, um, which I'll come back to. Our nodes fall into four broad categories. Greg's already introduced RD kit, um, and we have toolkit-based chemifomatics, which is based on RD kits so on match molecular powers nodes, for example. More recently, our uh, Ertl scaffold trees implementation. We also have sort of non-toolkit chemifomatics, um, mainly our Speedy Smiles nodes, as they're as they're all all the names start with Speedy Smiles. And the philosophy with those is that they're to operate on the raw string represent smiles representation and to allow very quick processing of large data sets as a pre-processing step um, before the more heavy lifting is done within a, uh, a toolkit. We have uh, nodes for accessing public data sources, so the PDB connector nodes, um, and our European PubMed Central uh, advanced query node. And then if you're not actually coming from a petition at all, we actually have quite a lot of general utility nodes. So loops, uh, flow, flow control, collection, uh, processing nodes, amongst others. Um, it's well worth a look um, what, what might be in there. I haven't got time to talk through it all today. I'm just going to talk briefly about some recent releases. We added our user interface selection modifiers recently. These appear as a modification in the workflow and it's a toolbar sandwiched between the um the workflow zoom and the familiar layout buttons they're also under the edit menu and also in the context menu of the nodes themselves in the workflow editor in this sub menu which is uh, extend selection and they allow you to do things like select all the downstream nodes from a current selection or to select all the nodes that connect um, two selected nodes in the editor together, um, which is quite useful for disentangling messy workflows and converting them through to uh, meta nodes, for example. We've added a couple of um, more column, uh, collection column nodes recently, so the mask lists node is one of those. That node allows us to filter the contents of a list cell um, based on the contents of the collection column in the same row in the table. And we have some um, binary object processing nodes, which allow compression and decompression in uh, zip and gzip format at the moment. Um, those nodes are operating on binary object columns in the table, not that, so they're not using temporary files or archives on, on disk directly. They're actually operating directly in the nine table. We recently totally reworked our flow control to switches and case switches. Um, partly inspired by the fact that the configurable node option with this little three dots menu item had become available and also the new flow variable types. So there's a set of five nodes, um, which a few of them are shown here in this very contrived example. Um, the configurable if case switch flow variable value node switches the port based on the, um, the value of flow variable. And you can add as many output ports as you want and change the input port. Um, these are provided, these conditions that you then match are provided by an extension point, so it's easily extended. And it also includes the path variable. So for example, you can check for availability of a file before you switch branch. Um, we also released a scaffold keys implementation of Peter Artle's code. It's worth having a look over at Peter Artle's website if you're interested in that in more detail. And I'm just going to finish by leaving this taster of some of the possibilities of what might come next. Um, none of these are definite th 
things that we're going to release in the near future, but if any of these grab your attention, then please do get in touch um, and we'll try and prioritize getting some of those out in the near future. So thank you very much for listening and thanks for the invite. Thank you very much, Steve, showing all those very, very nice features that you uh, are that you basically already released, right? It was 23rd, 24th of, of May. Yeah. Right. That's really so congratulations on that. Um, that's that's a huge step uh, ahead. And thank you very much uh, for everybody being here with us today. As I already mentioned, uh, you can host your questions to the forum, uh, as you will see on the links uh, popping up right now. You don't have to take notes, of course, it will be sent over uh, in a follow-up email uh, very soon after the, uh, the event itself.